Hi guys, let's break down this question on light waves, which reads, a monochromatic beam of light is incident at an angle of 30 degrees on one face of a 60 degree prism uh, made of glass with a refractive index 1.6. Calculate the angle of refraction at the first face. So here's an example of our prism. Uh, when we're talking about the first face, we're talking about where the light is incident. Okay, So in short, between the normal, so this is uh, this is normal one, this southern here is our normal two. So between the normal and the angle of incident and the incident ray, we find our angle of incident i. So this is showing a ray of light going in incident at this point. So our incident here it passes through like that, then it goes on to the other end. Okay, so we are looking at this angle of incident i, which is made by the normal and the incident ray, this angle here is r, which is the refracted ray. Now we know that uh, this ray of light is moving from air to the prism, so that is uh, from a less dense medium to a more dense medium. So according to the question, it says calculate the angle of uh, refraction. Angle of refraction is this r that we have here. So to calculate r, we're going to use uh, Snell's law, of course. So according to Snell's law, we know that uh, index for one sine i is equals to index for two sine of r. So index for one, that is air, where it's coming from. So index for air is one. Sine, the angle of incidence given is uh, 30 degrees. This is equals to u2, the index for the prism, for the glass prism. That index is 1.6, so 1.6 sine r. So it's the r that we're looking for. So this means that this expression becomes sine r is equals to sine 30, which is half, sine 30 divided by 1.6. So if we say half divided by 1.6, we get uh, that value. The sine inverse of this gives us uh, 18.2. Our value of R for part A is 18.2 degrees. So we have found um, the angle of refraction on the first face. Now, determine the path uh, of the light, the prism, including the angle of incidence on the second face. So the path we're talking about is this red line. Now, this red line can be extended. That's when we're bringing the aspect of uh, deviation. But before we do that, on this same diagram that we have here, this angle that is created here, this angle, we can call it I2. That is the second uh, angle of incidence. While this angle here is supposed to be the reflected ray or reflected angle, but since it is emerging out of the, the prism, let's call this uh, the emergent uh, ray, then the emergent ray and the normal forms the emergent angle. So, uh, to answer the question, the question says, including, uh, so we've shown the path which light will pass through, those are the arrows showing, then including the angle of incidence at the second phase. So the angle of incidence at the second phase, in this case, this is the I2 that we're talking about. So how do we calculate I2? Uh, one thing that's important to note is that uh, for the triangle that we have here, we can see that the normal and the prism form a right angle. So if that's the case, then this angle here, is 90 degrees minus r because this is a 90 it forms a right angle let me show you the right angle the right angle is this one here right so if this is the right angle then to find this angle we we'll just say 90 minus that same thing since this other side as well will form an, a, a right angle then this angle here will be 90 degrees minus i not r sorry 90 degrees minus i2 so for the triangle, the small triangle that has been formed, we can see that in that triangle, we have 90 minus R plus 90 minus I2 plus A, the apex, and all this is in a triangle is equals to 180. This gives us uh, 1090, we get 180 minus R minus I2 plus the apex angle, this is equals to 180. So, you can clearly see that this 180 
can cancel that one each. The expression that we have, if i and r cross the cosine, we'll see that a apex is equals to r plus i2. Okay. So, uh, based on the question, it says uh, including the angle of incidence at the second phase. So, at the second phase, the relationship that we have found, so this is for part B, after I draw a diagram, part B you say r plus i2 is equals to the apex CKST. So, uh, this expression that we have here, that's what I'm talking about, this one, r plus i2 is equals to the apex. So, once we have that, we can find the value of, uh, of i2. So, the angle of incidence at the second phase, which is i2, will be equals to a minus r, right? So, i is equals to, now, our apex, we've been given the apex, apex is 60, so 60 minus r. r is this value that we've just found, which is 18.2. So, what do we get as i2? We subtract the 2. This would give us 41.8. 41.8 degrees. So we've answered part B. So part C says, uh, find the deviation produced by the prism. So to find deviation, the first thing we need to do is, we need to extend the incident rays like this. So what is happening here is, this is the incident ray, but it has been extended. So since it has been extended, this angle that is found here is the angle of deviation. Let's call it uh, delta 1. Same thing, we have another extended uh, incident ray. Remember, this is also an incident ray coming in. This one is the emergent ray. So the second delta will be found here as delta 2. So it's important to note that this angle from here all the way up to here. This whole angle is what produces the two deviations, deviation one, deviation two. So to find the total deviation, we'll just say add deviation one plus deviation two. Okay? So how can we how how do we obtain an expression of adding these two deviations? So first of all, let's just include everything that we have. This is I. Okay. This here is R. Then this here is I2. Then the emergent ray is this one here, E. So, this is what we're going to do. Let's first focus on the first phase. We can see that uh, light moves from air into the prism, where there's delta 1. And the expression for delta is this one. Delta 1 plus R is equals to I. So an expression for delta here will be delta 1 is equals to I minus R. So this is the expression that we'll have for delta 1. Okay. For delta 2, the expression should be the opposite of this, which is uh, delta 2 plus I is equals to R. Understand that the first one is when light is moving from a less dense medium to a more dense medium. But when light is moving from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, this is the expression that we use. And this gives us delta 2 is equals to R minus I. So these are the two formulas. So now, this is what we're going to do. Let's uh, say uh, we know, first of all, that we're looking for the total deviation. This is part C. Deviation. Total deviation is given by deviation 1 plus deviation so deviation 1 is i minus r. But remember, this i is uh, the one that is incident. The r is the one that is refracted. So this part is okay. So we can say uh, total deviation is equals to i minus r. This one is okay. How about the second one? The second one, which is r minus i, that arrow we're talking about is the angle of emergence. And the I we're talking about is the second angle of incidence. So, if that's the case, we need R minus I. So, R minus I, write like this, R minus I. Now, total deviation will be equals to I, let's differentiate them now, minus, so this is I1, minus R. This second R 
is the angle of emergence minus this i is i2. So to find total deviation, this is what we need to obtain. But uh, remember, we said r plus i2 is equals to apex. So we can rewrite this now as total deviation is equals to, so we'll have i1 plus e minus r minus i2, then total deviation is equals to i1 plus e minus, open bracket, r plus i2. Remember, r plus i2, r plus i2 is apex, right? So if that's the case, this becomes total deviation is equals to i1 plus uh, e minus the apex. So this is the formula we shall use. Now, to use this formula, we need i, of which i we have. Angle of incidence we've been given in the equation is uh, 30 degrees. Here's our i. Um, apex we've been given, 60. This is our apex. This one here is our i1. What we don't have is the angle of emergence. So to find the angle of emergence, we're going to apply Snell's law. Snell's law between I2 and E. Now remember, we're moving from the prism, which has an index of 1.6, going to air, which has an index of 1. So let's apply Snell's law. So in this case, applying Snell's law, we'll say U1 sine I, of which this is now I2, this is equals to U2 sine R. But instead of R, we're going to put E, the angle of emergence. So U, 1.6, where light is coming from. Then sine I, angle of incidence, the second one is the one that we calculated here, which is uh, 41.8. So we substitute it here. 41.8. This is equals to U2 is 1. Then we have sine of E, the angle of emergence. So, we say 1.6 sine 41.8. So, sine E, in this case, sine E, is equals to uh, 1.066. So E is equals to the sine inverse. Now if you know your trigonometry very well, we can see that this number is greater than 1, hence this will give us an error. So we cannot find the value of E. It's not applicable. So what does this mean? If it's not applicable, what does it mean? Since we cannot find the value of E, it means that we have exceeded or should we say we've gone lower than the minimum deviation? That's why we cannot find the value of E. Meaning that the value of E that we're looking for is actually greater than 90 degrees. So in other words, we can say um, it's more like it, it light bounces back into the prism, something like that. So now, since we cannot find E, uh, then let's calculate the minimum deviation, part T. What is the minimum deviation for us to be able to, to see that this prism can refract light? So to calculate minimum deviation, let's first understand some conditions for minimum deviation. Condition number one for minimum deviation is that uh, the, angle of in, the angle of incidence I should be equals to the angle of emergence. That's the first condition. The second condition is that since these two angles are the same, it means that R will be equals to I2. So in short, we're saying if, uh, remember the question said that um, calculate the minimum deviation if the angle of incidence is adjusted for the minimum deviation condition, right? So it means that if that's the case, I is the same as E. That's the condition. And the other condition is that this R here is the same as this I2. So having those conditions in mind and using this formula that we have here that we formed for deviation, let's see what we get. So we said that at D, deviation total is given by, we said I 
plus e minus apex but according to the conditions of total uh, sorry minimum deviation we said that e is equals to i so we can replace i with e or e with i either of the two is the same thing meaning that it's, not, it's now the, the minimum deviation where there is uh, e i'll replace e with i1 minus a like that so minimum deviation is equals to 2i minus a right so if this is the case we can say the minimum deviation is equals to what is i according to the question i given is 30 so if we do our replacements we'll say 2 times 30 our angle of apex is 60 so minimum deviation in this case will be equals to 60 minus 60 which is a zero degrees so what this entails is that uh, if you look at the question let me just go back where is it okay calculate the minimum deviation if the angle of incidence is adjusted for the minimum deviation condition so we cannot use 30 for this particular question we are supposed to use a certain angle such that it is adjusted for minimum um, deviation condition so just to give you an example suppose we use angle of incidence maybe for example 35 degrees we'll say minimum deviation will be our picking it up from here minimum deviation will be 2 times 35 minus 60 the apex of which our minimum deviation in this case will be 70 minus uh, 60 which is 10 degrees that is when we adjust it so what you do in this case is you first find the minimum deviation based on the uh, question uh, what is the conditions um, given which is 30 degrees and apex 60 then you can just adjust it by increasing the angle of incidence so in this case if i increase it to 35 you will see that the minimum um, deviation is a 10 so generally this is what you are supposed to uh, obtain after finding a condition for minimum deviation so there we have it i hope it makes sense thank you very much